Welcome to the Maximo Application Suite video series brought to you by Maven Asset Management. In this series of videos, we're taking a look at Maximo Manage with Cognos Analytics. And this video is the second in our series. The first video, we actually went into Maximo and we utilized the app export functionality to export a large amount of data from work order tracking. In this second video, we're now going to take that data that we created or exported from Maximo and bring it into Cognos and prep it or prepare it for analysis, which will be our third and fourth videos. So again, to recap what we're doing here, this is a very top level overview of Maximo here on the left hand side, Cognos on the right. And again, I'm showing you data that we produced from Maximo Manage and Mass, but it could be in Maximo 761 or any version of Maximo you have today. Cognos in this, in this case doesn't care. So what we're going to be using is a file export, that CSV file. And again, I did it with an app export. You could do a result set. You could do a simply list tab download from any application. You're just trying to get some Maximo data that you can push up into Cognos. And why are we doing that file export? This is what is available with the free version of Cognos that I'm going to be using today. The other options that I mentioned for data sets are available only with an enterprise version of Cognos. So how, again, do I start with Cognos? Well, first, I'd recommend signing up for a 30-day free version of Cognos if it's not available in your organization today. The benefit of doing this is tremendous, right? You're not investing in enabling or setting up a Maximo Cognos integration installation. You're simply bringing in some data from Maximo, pushing it up into Cognos, and seeing what it looks like, seeing how easy it is to use Cognos and the insights that it can give you. So again, go to this URL, sign up for 30 days, and then you can start exploring the data. So let's go over to Cognos now and take a look. All right, excellent. Here I am in my free version of Cognos Analytics, and you can see it's got a really nice, clean look and feel. You can get more familiar by watching a video, taking a product tour, but let's jump right into it and start working with Cognos. Now, Cognos is made up of these four modules where we upload, prepare, and explore, and then present data. And we're going to focus on these first two, uploading data and preparing it. So uploading data is where we're going to take the CSV file that we have in Maximo. It's a real simple dialog, and to save us a little time, I've already uploaded the data up here. And again, uploading can you know, have a lot of different variables, your network connection, the size of the CSV file, etc. So again, I just quick did an upload before we started. So now that we have our Maximo data uploaded, we want to move into our next, next segment where we're going to prepare our data. And this is really exciting. This is the part I really love, and I'm going to pull up this CSV file, Cognos Analytics Maximo Demo 1, perfect, and I'm going to click OK. So as soon as I do that, a lot of magic happens, right? I've opened up now a data module and I can see where I am. I can see an asterisk up here. It means I haven't saved anything. I haven't done anything. But what's so important is I can see all the fields that were in my Maximo CSV file, they'll brought over here to me automatically. If I open up or expand this, I can start to see some preview of the data if I wanted to make sure, hey, yep, that's what the field is that I think it is. And, you know, I can also start clicking to see, again, that preview to understand my fields and what I have available. Super impressive, super, super helpful. But now as I look at this data, there's a couple of things that I know I want to do. One of the first things that I want to do is I always like to add a calculation because I can automatically see here I have an actual labor cost, a material cost, and service cost. Well, maybe I want to make it easy on my user. So let's add a total actual cost. So how do I do that? I'm going to add a calculation and I'm just going to simply click, double click on those three fields. Oops, four, let's get tools in there. And what are we going to do? We're going to add those all together. Super simple, but super, oops, make sure you get that in the right place. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to add that and one more. Perfect, give it a better name. So we're gonna call this my total actual cost. 
and then I'm going to click OK. And I've got my first calculation automatically in there. So that means who is ever using this data set or this data module, that's already available to him. Uh, let's do another one while we're here, right? Let's do uh, a total estimated cost. And let's bring in corresponding values, estimated labor, materials, services, and tools. See how easy this is? It's very visual, very, very easy to work with. And again, it's really a matter of um, bringing in those fields, seeing what's going to make easier for users to analyze. That's really what we're doing here. So I've added my total estimated and actual cost. Let me just bring this over a little bit so I can see. So these are my two calculations. Maybe I want to add another one. And in this case, let's do our actual cost. Double click on that. Because wouldn't it be interesting to know what my delta is, right? So this is the delta of actual versus estimate, whatever you wanted to call it, estimated. Um, and I'm going to say OK. So now I have three calculated fields that will always display. And I can see those down here. Now, a couple of things that I always notice as I'm previewing my data is I don't like all these decimal points. I don't think I'm going to be analyzing to that level. So let's do a little bit of cleanup here. Let's go to my formatting my data. Let's make this a number. Um, and let's just, you know, I, I'm not going to have any decimal points. Let's, let's make it easy on ourselves, right? Uh, format our data, make it a number, and let's give it a zero. Perfect. Now you can see um, how you navigate within the uh, Cognos or within this functionality itself is up to you. Sometimes people do it on the column. Sometimes you do it over here on the far left hand side. Just find something that is comfortable and right for you. And now look how much easier that is to analyze. It's easier on the eye. But as I look at this, what I notice right away that is not so easy on the eye is over here, my actual finish. Oh my goodness, what does this mean? This means that, um, I'll get that dialog out, that I finish this work order on March 15th at 10.28 in the morning. That's way, way too much information for me. I'm going to actually clean this field up a little bit too. And this is one of the incredible, incredible um, features of Cognos that I really, really love. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this. So what does that mean? It means instead of looking at that long date time value, I'm going to just bring in a date, I'm going to bring in a year, a month, and a day. And now what this does is it takes the actual finish and it breaks it up into these four different columns. So for example, if I wanted to evaluate or analyze um, work orders that were completed in 2022, it's going to be so much easier for me or to analyze work orders that were completed in a specific month or to maybe look at some trends on the, the days of the year. Super helpful. But now I want to make this a little clearer, right? This is the actual finish date, right? Give it a label so my user knows what they're looking at. This is my actual, whoops, finish year. Perfect. Love that. Um, month. Actual. And you're going to see when, as we start to analyze the data, how important this is. This is one of my favorite, favorite features of Cognos. We used to have to work really hard to get this in there, and now it's right there. Perfect. So now look what's going to happen over here. There's my actual finish, Cognos is thinking, and now it added four new columns, my finish date, my finish year, my month, and my day. And if I scroll over here to give you the preview, Look how much easier this is to analyze. I finished it on March 15th. Year is 22, month is three, finish date. I love that. Now when I look at actual finish, oh, that's just so nasty, right? So let's take actual finish 
and let's just hide it, right? Let's not even expose it to our user. And if you can see as I scroll down here, see how that has got a, a lighter gray, so that's not going to be exposed. So now that we've done that to actual finish, let's make sure we do the same thing over down here to schedule finish. I'm not always as concerned on when I'm supposed to start it, but I am concerned on when I'm supposed to finish something. So again, let's do that split. It really, really is incredibly helpful as we analyze the data. Let's see, oops, I missed the year, the month and the day. Perfect. I love how Cognos is very forgiving there. And so this is our sketch finish date. Let me see if I can just copy this. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Oh, perfect. Nice. Scroll over here. Sked finish month. Nice. And I think we have one more. And we're going to edit that. Perfect. So again, what does that do? It creates these four new columns, the date, the year, the month. And I'm going to do the same thing Instead of looking at all these long, long dates and times, I'm going to take that guy and I'm just going to hide him. Where is he? Nice. So again, now that he's hidden, when my users are analyzing the data in that next place, in that next portion of Cognos where we explore, they're going to be looking at the schedule finish date so they can still see 3-15-2022 or whatever it might be, the year, the day, and the month. So now I've done some really great things here. We've added a couple calculations. We split out those dates and I can continue to do that. I could also scroll down here. And if you um, remember from the object structure that we pushed over, the data that we pushed over from Maximo, I have this data up here, which is all my work order data. And now as I scroll down here, I'm going to see a lot of my asset data, right? This is or, uh, attributes or fields coming from the asset table. Here's all my asset information. Now I move down into locations, WP material, tools, lab trans, etc. So each one of those tables in the individual attributes are brought over. There's more work I, I could do here. I could add those splits to other important date fields. I could add more calculations, but let's stop here. That's a really good start. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we save this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to call this our CAMX demo um, module, excuse me. And you'll notice that Cognos has two options on where you can save your content. Team content is public. Think of that, the public access that we have in Maximo. But we're going to save that here, right? We want to just save it on ourselves. We're not ready to share this with anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then in the next video series, when I come back here, we're going to move on to this section where we're going to take that data that we've now set up or we've prepared here and bring that into the exploration phase of Cognos. So thank you very much for your time.